Momentum continues to be behind President Trump in the final stretch of the 2024 campaign. Not even 24 hours after his historic Madison Square Garden rally, a new poll has come out showing that Trump has taken the lead in a reliably blue state. But it's not just that one poll. There's actually other polls showing that Trump is now competitive in two additional historically blue states. According to Newsweek, Donald Trump takes shock lead over Kamala Harris in New Hampshire poll. According to the article, the latest New Hampshire Journal, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that poll, released Sunday night, gave Trump 50.2% of the vote, a razor-thin lead on Vice President Kamala Harris's 49.8%. This is exactly where the Trump campaign wants to be with tailwinds and momentum behind them. But it's not just that. Uh, Trump, this week, again, according to another Newsweek article, is actually planning rallies, going to do rallies in New Mexico and Virginia. And it's because new polling shows that Trump is competitive within the margin of error in those two states. So Trump is expanding the battlefield, expanding the map. He is going into other competitive territories. What's really interesting about these rallies in New Mexico and Virginia, you know, we're eight days away from Election Day. You would think that Trump would spend these last eight days He's really securing Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, and the seven battleground states we've really been talking about, right? But instead of doing that, Trump is now expanding the map by campaigning in two states he really hasn't focused on. So to me, that suggests that their internal numbers show that they're comfortable in those states. And yes, I'm sure Trump is going to go to Pennsylvania and a few other states to really make sure he turns out the vote. But the fact that he's even going to New Mexico and Virginia really means he's putting Kamala Harris on offense. So uh, according to yesterday's data, and I, I looked today, there's not really many new polls. So this is still pretty accurate. But um, this shows the leads that Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden had uh, compared to the deficit that Kamala Harris now has across all seven of the battleground states. So even if the polls, you know, the polls have historically underestimated Trump, but let's say they just get the polling spot on this time, still, you'd rather be in Trump's position. Um, but that is not all. It's also the Madison Square Garden rally that is going to help Republicans in the House races there. That obviously is a huge fundraiser boost, a huge media boost. Even ABC's John Carl was praising Donald Trump, essentially admitting on live TV that Trump was the only Republican who could have pulled yesterday's rally off. I, I was there for about six hours uh, yesterday. I, first thing I've got to say Madison Square Garden was packed. Uh, people waited hours to get in. They sat through hour after hour of this rally. They were fervent in their devotion to all things Trump. Trump has created a movement. There is no doubt. I cannot think of another Republican figure of my lifetime who could have come into a Democratic city like New York and put together anything like that. So regardless of what you're hearing in the mainstream media, regardless of what you're seeing on social media from Democrat and, uh, activists and influencer accounts, Trump's rally yesterday was a huge success, a massive turnout. His new policy proposals were met with thunderous applause. And yes, I know there was critiques over the comedian, over Tony Hinchcliffe, and I'll get to that uh, later in the video. But there is just a steady stream of good news coming out for Donald Trump. And that's why the media is focused in on what a comedian said and not what Donald Trump is actually doing, not what he's actually proposing policy-wise. So this is all great news. One thing that really stood out to me was that last night, a two-term DNC delegate actually announced that she has left the Repub or excuse me, left the Democrat Party and has switched to the Republican Party and has voted for Donald Trump. Again, a two-term DNC delegate. In 2020, I was elected at 18 to become one of the youngest delegates to the Democratic National Convention on behalf of my district. And in 2024, I was elected again to return to the DNC as a delegate. But this year, I'm casting my ballot for Donald Trump. You see, after I was elected in March, which was before Joe Biden's debate, I wanted to go to the DNC because I wanted answers on free speech issues, the border, and the economy. However, after reflecting on my time at the DNC, I realized that it was no longer the party of free speech and civil liberties that it used to be. In fact, Patrick Henry once said that the liberties of a people never were nor ever will be secure when the transactions of their rulers may be concealed from them. And for the rulers of the Democratic Party elite to install Kamala Harris as the presidential nominee via stripping the vote of 14 million Americans, including their own delegates such as myself, well, that was a decision and a transaction that was concealed. 
And now I'm happy to say that I'm officially joining the Republican Party as a constitutional conservative. And by the way, it's not just this year's primary or lack thereof. It also happened in 2016 with their super delegate shenanigans. You know, Bernie Sanders was really competitive and the Democrats arguably uh, stole or wrenched away or put their thumb on the scale to give that nomination to Hillary Clinton and ignore Bernie Sanders supporters. So there is just a steady stream of good news for Donald Trump, a steady stream of good news for the Republicans. And that's why the Democrats are getting more desperate. And as I referenced earlier, they're really honing in on what Tony Hinchcliffe said, again, a comedian at Trump's rally. But um, yesterday, this Chiron, this image of M MSNBC comparing Trump's rally to the Nazi rally in the 30s has started going viral. Well, I was able to find the full clip, the full segment, and it wasn't just the Chiron. They actually found images from that rally, footage from that rally, and juxtaposed it with Donald Trump's rally. This is just ridiculous. This is just desperate. And this shows that there is no low too low for the Democrats. But that jamboree happening right now, you see it there on your screen, in that place is particularly chilling because in 1939, more than 20,000 supporters of a different fascist leader, Adolf Hitler, packed the garden for a so-called pro-America rally, a rally where speakers voiced anti-Semitic rhetoric from a stage draped with Nazi banners. When a Jewish protester rushed the stage, the Associated Press reported, quote, instantly, a dozen or more stormtroopers set upon him, knocking him down and beating him as he held his head in his arms. Most of his clothing was torn from his body. Later, he was booked for disorderly conduct. Now, against that backdrop of history, Donald Trump, the man who has threatened to use the military against opponents he calls enemies from within, who has threatened to use, use the troops to quell what he says are lawless cities, and to use those troops to carry out mass deportations of immigrants is once again turning Madison Square Garden into a staging ground for extremism. I mean, just filled with lies, filled with disinformation, not even misinformation, but just flat out disinformation. And, you know, this is a tactic that the left uses virtually every single election cycle. Just take a look at all the Republicans that the left has labeled fascist or Hitler pretty much Every single one. I mean, uh, Barry Goldwater, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan, and now Donald Trump. If, if all of those people were really fascist and Hitler, I wouldn't be here today making this YouTube video for y'all. They, again, desperate people do desperate things, and they sense this momentum behind Donald Trump. And that is why they are focused in on what Tony Hinchcliffe said his jokes, his comedy routine. And again, I think it was inappropriate. I don't think it was funny. I don't think it was a joke that I would have made. And I think it was an inappropriate place to make that joke. But it's not as if he, he's not the one running for president, right? And he's a comedian. Just take a look. So one day ago, Tim Walls had a rally in Phoenix, Arizona, and he had a comedian, George Lopez, come out. Well, George Lopez joked that Mexicans are thieves. That's right, George Lopez, just think of his last name, joked that Mexicans are thieves. Take a look at this. Donald Trump said he was going to build a wall. And George Lopez said, you better build it in one day because if you leave that material out there overnight. Oh boy, is Tim Walls racist for having that joke at his rally? Is Kamala Harris a racist for having a joke at that rally? Should we all be screaming at the Democrats? No, of course not, because clearly that was a joke. And in that instance, specifically, it was a self-deprecating type of joke, but it was a joke nonetheless. Everyone knew he wasn't actually saying all Mexicans are thieves and they're gonna steal the material. No, that would be ridiculous. Yet, you don't see the outcry on the left. The, here, here's my perspective. If I had to distill my perspective on yesterday's rally, first of all, it was a tremendous success. Huge turnout, especially in the belly of the beast. But the media, the Democrats, they're not upset about that joke. They're upset that Trump is winning. That's what this is all about. Truly, 
Truly, they don't care about the joke. They're just, they want to find something to complain about because they know Trump has the momentum. They know Trump is in the stronger position. Now, a lot can happen in eight days. That doesn't mean take your foot off the pedal. But they're envious of the position that Trump is in. And that's why they're throwing everything they can at the wall to see what sticks. And if something sticks, if something has traction, that's what they're going with. And while this Tony Hinchcliffe thing, unfortunately, there's a lot of fuel there and they're going to burn up uh, that controversy as long as they can until all the oxygen's out of the room. By the way, Sonny Hostin, who I get is not a comedian, but she is a person on The View. She once compared white women, specifically white Republican women in the suburbs, to cockroaches. It wasn't a joke. She was very serious. Republicans, but what's also surprising to me is the abortion issue. Um, I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid, right? It's, it's I think like that's they're that's voting, no, it's they're voting to the against, voter. They're we, voting we, no, against no, no. their own self-interest. We, we do they want to live in Gilead? Okay, do they so do we live in the hands Do we love tail? democracy or not? Because uh, just saying that it's, it's insulting to the voter. People make up decisions <laughs> on what's right for their family. And the idea that- It's like roaches voting for raid. She was making a comparison. She was making an analogy. It wasn't a joke. She essentially, she did compare Republican, white Republican women to cockroaches. Oh, but, but Trump called a certain group of people vermin. He was specifically referring to the criminals, the rapists, the murderers who are infiltrating the country and harming American citizens. Meanwhile, you know, Sonny Hostin makes that remark about actual American citizens and no one cares. No one on the left blinks an eye. Yet... This morning, after Tony Hinchcliffe's comedic routine, Sonny Hostin had this to say, the hypocrisy. This Puerto Rican has something to say about the island that I love, where my family is from. Puerto Rico is trash. We are Americans, Donald Trump. Americans. <laughs> we voluntarily serve disproportionately high in the military while you have bone spurs. And we vote. Pennsylvania is home to almost half a million Puerto Ricans. North Carolina, 115,000. Georgia, 100,000. Arizona, 64,000. Wisconsin, 61,000. Michigan, 43,000. Nevada, 27,000. We vote Donald Trump. Trash. And by the way, Jennifer Lopez, Ricky Martin, Bad Bunny, Luis Fonsi, and Mark Anthony have over 345 million followers on Instagram. I think you only have 26 million, since you care so much about size. <laughs> and we don't like what was said about Puerto Rico. And we know how to take the trash out, Donald Trump. Yeah. Trash that has been collecting since 2016. And that's you, Donald Trump. My fellow Puerto Ricans, Trash Collection Day is November 5th, 2024. <laughs> Don't forget it. You know, right. A lot of lack of logic in that clip. The easiest example that I think is emblematic and representative of all the lack of logic in her tirade there was she was comparing Instagram followers. Instagram following sizes to Donald Trump. But what she did was she list five celebrities and you had to combine all five of them to get that extraordinary number that she came up with and then compared it to Donald Trump. Okay, yeah, so let's compare five people combined to Donald Trump's. whoop de doo Like, total lack of logic and, again, representative of everything else in that tirade. Again, Donald Trump didn't make those comments. A comedian did. Multiple things can be true. Inappropriate joke, sure. Does that mean that that's what Donald Trump actually thinks? Like I said yesterday, it is very clear the campaign doesn't vet their speeches. Maybe here, here's the thing. It, it, it can be true that that's a mistake on the campaign. They shouldn't be making um, unforced errors this close to Election Day, but they believe in free speech, and it is what it is now, and we just have to deal with the fallout. Um, 
fortunately, Trump does have a lot of great advocates out there. One of my favorite ones, really, uh, someone who I admire and look up to a lot is Byron Donalds. He went on CNBC and just absolutely torched the host for um, his comments about Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden. Question for you. Sure, go ahead. And this is what I think, to the extent that there are folks who, by the way, may agree with the policies of Trump. Yes. But don't want to vote for Trump. And those, you know, you know some of those people. Mm. The reason that they don't want to vote for Trump is because they see, either in his character or the people who seem to support him, um, seem to be engaged in that or willing to engage in that. Right. Because you don't, what you don't see, you don't go to other rallies for Harris or see in, that, in a Harris rally that kind of vitriol. It just, you, you, you see, I, look, you there's. Don't? I don't think you do. Kamala Maybe. Harris spends half her time talking about her rival as Hitler. After he's been, uh, there have been attempts on his life, not once, but twice. She's doing it right now. Every Democrat official at these rallies refers to him as Adolf Hitler. You got Hillary Clinton running around there hawking her book that nobody wants to buy, frankly. And, they're talk and she's talking right. about how this is akin to 1939. Are you out of your mind? You want to talk about rhetoric? Let's compare. But let me go back. We are talking about the comments of a comedian. Right. And everybody's going to forget it in 48 hours. The real joke in America is the terrible policy of Kamala Harris. Let's talk specifically about Puerto Ricans in America today. Puerto Ricans have had to live under the same inflation unleashed by Kamala Harris. And that's not a joke, but they got to live with it. Puerto Ricans today are living under the same terrible border policies I, that Joe Biden and I, Kamala Harris unleashed. That's a terrible I, joke on the American people. We should be focused on. That. I know I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. The Democrats are not upset about the comedian. The Democrats are not upset at the joke. They're upset that Trump currently has the lead. They're upset that Trump is winning. They're upset that Trump has the momentum. It, it's it, it's not deflection. It's when you uh they're projecting. That's what it is. They're 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 projecting and it's coming out in a weird way. It's uh their anger is coming out in, you know, they're just projecting their anger about Trump standing in the race and trying to put it wherever they can. Now, two more stories I want to get to before the end of the video. There was an incident at, at Clark County. Someone set the drop box, uh, excuse me, the ballots inside the drop box on fire. Um, you can see the footage here. Unfortunately, uh, there were hundreds of ballots inside the drop box. Again, this happened in Clark County. Uh, from reports that I could find, the last time ballots were collected was Saturday, this past Saturday afternoon at 1.30 p.m. So hundreds of ballots um, just absolutely gone. So my message to you, if I have any viewers in Clark County, if you know anyone who lives in Clark County and you dropped off a ballot at the drop box, please, please make sure um, that this didn't affect you. And... Um, really scary to see that stuff like this is happening this close to Election Day. The last story I want to get to is this. So Kamala Harris, she is not just copying Donald Trump's policies. You know, she copied the no tax on tips, yada, yada, yada. That wasn't the only, only one. But now she's going to, she went to a black barbershop. Coincidence? Or is she following Donald Trump's campaign tactics? I think it's pretty clear. I, I, I don't think that this is a coincidence. I think she's following what Trump is doing because she realizes that he has the momentum. And if that's the case, if she's copycatting Trump, does that not suggest that she's behind, that she sees what he's doing is working for him, so she's trying to mimic him so she can have the same sort of benefits? Because that's what I see from it. Um, but as always, all of that is just my analysis, just my commentary. And I would love to know yours in the comments below. Now, anyone, feel free to pitch in, obviously. But specifically, if you are Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican American, and you are voting in the election, or if you have voted, specifically, I want to hear from you. Uh, have you voted for Trump? Did this comedian, and it's okay if he did, because I, I truly just want to know and would love to converse with you in the comments. Did this comedian change your vote? Are you now on the fence? Let me know in the comments down below. And everyone else, of course, feel free to chime in on any story. Also, for those of you who noticed that the image is clearer and the red dot is gone, first of all, sharp eyes. Thank you. I am now filming on my phone. So if you noticed my eyeline going everywhere, it's weird because I'm used to 
really technical stuff, but I'm used to looking at the camera lens somewhere else. And so, like, yeah, I'm not used to looking at my phone lens quite yet. Um, but I'm surprised. Hey, the iPhones now are super good, and it's actually a lot better than my camera. So the red dot, a piece of dust had got in somehow inside the camera lens, and that's what was causing the red dot. But my camera lens uh, was about... Uh, well, at the time I bought it, it was like $500. I bought it probably over a decade ago at this point. So it's pretty old. Um, but I w was unable to clean in. So what you saw, that red dot that was always over my shoulder. Some of you really sharp eyes spotted that. Notice it was in every video. But um, no longer using the camera. Now using my iPhone. And uh, things are crisp. Things are really crisp. Uh, you can see uh, I, I'm going to have to be sure to clean a lot. By the way, um, I get a lot of people commenting. They're like, Daniel, you need to clean your apartment more. I like, this is not a set. I actually live here. Like my swim bag, I, I've told you all, like I'm an avid swimmer and runner. So like my swim, like everything you see behind me is because it's lived in. Like, yeah, it's. I, I keep things as clean as I can, but there's only so much space in an apartment. And I just have to keep things like I keep my pens on the counter because I write on the counter. Yeah, whatever. Um, I feel like I'm just babbling now. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, if and when I'm lucky to reach 100,000 subscribers, uh, we are going to celebrate. A lot of you have been asking, especially newer viewers to the channel, for me to introduce my pets. Um, I have not introduced them yet. I will not only introduce their names. I have a dog and a cat, but their adoption stories, uh, baby pictures, uh, lots of other fun stories. We're going to do things to celebrate uh, the channel and all of you, by the way, because it wouldn't be possible without you. Um, so I'm really excited to do that. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos. <laughs>